Okay. Hi, my name is Travis Stanley from Group Free, the Mighty Mitochondrias. Uh, this week, uh, Caitlin took us through What's the Matter, which was lesson, fr lesson three of solid studies from page 35 to 40. Uh, Caitlin did an excellent job as a facilitator. Unfortunately, I couldn't be there live, uh, but Caitlin had a nice list of questions for me, and I very much enjoyed my teammate's discussion. Uh, take two of this recording as the mic on my computer doesn't want to work at the moment. So uh, here we go. I've uh, already rehearsed, so this should be amazing. Uh, so loved my group's discussion um, around the activity itself and uh, the different scientific understandings, um, CDSU, variables, um, hypothesis. Uh, Caitlin really wanted me to touch on um, that kind of thing uh, to do with the hypothesis and the variables in the lesson. Um, one thing I found coming into the lesson is that I thought, you know, students would have a lot of alternate conceptions about what a solid is and the different states of matter, um, what they can exist in and look like and still be defined as a solid object or material. Um, the lesson allows students to explore their understanding of what the word hard means to them. And then using the scientific definition of hard, they can test for and identify properties that are shared by different solid materials. Um, and then they might be expanding upon that lack of knowledge or that alternate conception they had beforehand where they might not have considered things like uh, powders uh, to be a solid, for example, because it wouldn't be that stereotypical knowledge that they'd come in to lesson with. Um, so I think it's an ex excellent explore phase uh, lesson. Um, I think before commencing the tests, students themselves could form the hypothesis of what they think the properties of a solid are. And then as they conduct their tests and go through those scientific inquiry skills, uh, they can see if they were correct in their initial hypothesis or if in their final hypothesis, it turns out that what the properties of a solid are are much different from what they initially, um, maybe stereotypically thought the properties of a solid would be uh, going into the lesson. Um, so I think it's an excellent lesson uh, for developing students' scientific literacy um, based on the CDSU. It's an important concept to understand before exploring areas of the curriculum that really build upon this kind of foundational understanding of things like the properties of a solid and the properties of matter. Um, which kind of like branches into like, you know, um, the nature of science, which, uh, Caitlin also had a few questions for me about and, um, wanted me to talk about, um, getting students to critically reflect on the way they view the world. And, you know, this is really a foundational point to start building upon that, um, you know, understanding the properties of a solid and changing the way that they view the world and different materials if they went into the lesson and they thought that a powder wasn't a solid or they weren't aware that you could have crystals in liquid form that are still considered a solid. Um, so I think it's an excellent lesson in terms of changing the way students think about the world and interpret and understand the properties of matter around them. The lesson could include history discussing the scientific impacts and discoveries our understanding of solids and the properties of matter have led to um, throughout our history. Um, problems could arise with this understanding from a scientific perspective where students knowing you can have, you know, liquid crystals, powders and other substances not traditionally understood by them before you know um developing this understanding to be solids could then confuse students about other substances not being solids or certain liquids might be a solid um, when no it is just a liquid um could lead to some confusion there but um you know, I, I think you'd be teaching something like this the properties of solids in conjunction with lessons such as the properties of liquids and gases so uh, fingers crossed you'd be able to overcome any of those uh, problems that might arise there. Um, Caitlin also wanted me to touch on science as a human endeavor, um, so she had some questions for me there. Um, uh, in terms of uh, science as a human endeavor, how does this lesson and the understanding that students are gaining um, relate to people's everyday lives? And um, the one thing that I thought of there was... Um, you know, when you go through this lesson and what it entails, it, it really focuses on one, 
the enhanced classification of properties, the, the ability of students to classify different properties, um, solids, gases, and liquids, and understanding those properties. Um, and also like the overarching idea for this lesson was increasing students' uh, pattern, order, and identification skills. You know, so I think, um, you know, from a foundational level, that knowledge of the classification of different properties and understanding those properties, that increased pattern, order, and identification skill, you know, that, that ability by the students. Um, in so many, like, it's multifaceted in so many different areas, you know, layers of society, it, just having that knowledge, that scientific understanding, um, that those skills, you know, benefit you in your everyday life in a myriad of different ways. Um, Caitlin also uh, had the question for me of uh, how the knowledge you know um, could be used to promote things like uh, sustainability you know really following on that science is a human endeavor umbrella and I actually think that you know this lesson in particular um, and you know this scientific content knowledge you know that you're unpacking for the students is, is really foundational to building on that knowledge that will really support sustainability because um, you know in order for students you know to be ecologically sustainable human beings in their everyday life, they need to understand how the world works and understanding what a solid is, what a gas is, what a liquid is, and the properties of those different materials is very foundational knowledge to then building on how our world works, what the lithosphere is, what the biosphere is, um, you know, what the atmosphere is, you know, what are the properties, what are the materials that make up these things, how does the earth work, and you know, you can't understand things like uh, climate change and, you know, uh, the troposphere uh, if you don't have that science knowledge, um, and that all relates back to sustainability, you know, uh, you know, to be able to be sustainable, you need to understand how the world works and what things are working against it, etc. Um I think it's important. I think it's a real foundational building block to then building on that scientific understanding of how the world works and in turn how to help be sustainable and ecological in that world. Um, and then, you know, Caitlin, science is a human endeavor. Uh, wanted me to touch on how could this knowledge relate to thinking critically, creatively, and being responsible citizens. Um, I think a really big thing in a lesson like this in particular is it's building on students' science inquiry skills. Um, so, yeah, uh, the testing, collecting data, analyzing data, looking for patterns, etc. All of these different things that questioning and predicting, planning and conducting, processing and analyzing data and information, evaluating, communicating. Um, in regards to these lessons, students are really honing those skills, um, developing those skills, and not just related to science or scientific content knowledge, those skills as an everyday human being, you know, throughout your everyday life as a functioning citizen in our society are excellent skills to have for a myriad of different reasons that can be applied in a myriad of different ways throughout your everyday life. So I think in terms of being critical, creative and responsible citizens, having that science inquiry knowledge, having those skills, um, being able to have a greater use and influence over science by understanding this foundational knowledge, building onto it, how does the world work, being sustainable. It, I think it has a massive flow on effect when it comes to science as a human endeavor. So it was a great lesson. Um, Caitlin, amazing facilitator, excellent discussion by my group. Uh, sorry I was late to the party, um, but I hope you enjoyed my contribution.